Good morning, my loves. Welcome back. So today we are going to talk about the second house, eighth house axis, the abundance axis or the money axis. It is um, the house polarity that tells us about worth and value. And it also tells us about desires we have based on, on physical things on um, things that we want to own. So in today's video, we are going to look at what do these two houses mean? How, what's the interplay? How do they play together? How do they work together? And uh, most important, what can we learn? So let's start with the second house. The second house is the house of worth and value. And yes, this includes money, the money you make. The money you make and how you actually make that money. That's what we can learn um, when we look at our second house in our chart. Before we look at the outside manifestation of what we want, we need to look at the inside. So what are we holding inside? Worth and values. What are the values we base our life upon? What are um, the principles that we live by? And then how do those translate into physical things, into valuables? How does value translate into valuables in our lives? That's what we can learn when we look at the second house. Now, also, when it comes to our physical form, remember the first house is we are becoming physical, right? We are coming, we're coming out of the mother's womb and whoop de doo here we are on planet Earth. Now in the second house, we learn and understand that living on this planet means having things, right? And by having things, I don't just mean like the couch you own or uh, the car you own, but also food, right? Having food, nourishing food to nourish the body. So food is also a component, an important component um, of the second house. And it, when we look at it from the perspective that I talked about earlier, where the value we hold inside translates into our valuables, like what value does food hold in your life? Good food, nourishing food. And how does that then translate in the food you buy, the food you put into your body? And yes, the big, the big uh, thing that everyone wants to know about uh, when it comes to the second house is the money part. And money really is just another word for abundance, right? Having money is having abundance in your life where you can actually go out and buy the things you want. And But before that, you need to understand that the way you get there, the, the way you will receive the money is by understanding that you are worthy of having it. And that is, that is the disconnect and that's the, the difficulty because it's not just something you can think your way into. It's not just a mental plane, it's an embodiment, right? If you're in the second house, it's embodying. It's the second house is an embodiment. And that's what we often get wrong specifically um, you know, when we look at the, um, the world of, what are we calling it? The world of coaching, you know, coaching in terms of money mentality or money, whatever they call it, makeover. Um, it is, you're not thinking your way <laughs> to money, right? It's, it's like the thinking part, it's, it's one little part of it. The embodying is what gets you there. And the embodying, that is where the work comes in, the inner work you have to do. And that's now also where the eighth house comes in, right? That's where the connection is between the second house and the eighth house, because the eighth house also talks about money, the money we receive from others. Often it uh, relates to our partner's finances. It also relates to an inheritance that we may get, but it also relates to uh, taxes. So 
there is the money connection here, but on a deeper level, the eighth house represents um, the skeletons in the closet, right? It represents the deeper, darker parts, not the, the, the parts that are bad, but the, the parts that we don't see, the unconscious parts, the unraveling that we have to go through to understand ourselves better, to understand our conditioning, and to really dive deep to connect with our innate worthiness. This is not a mental exercise you can do. It is not, it, the mental part is just one little part of it. Um, it is an embodiment that you, it's, a, it's something you work through on all levels to get to understand your, your worth. In the eighth house, you go down the rabbit hole. You, you get to understand yourself on a deeper level. And that's also the area of therapy, where we do therapy, where we dive into our childhood and understand uh, or, and make the connection between the past and the present and why things are not working out the way we would like them to work out, even though we think positive, right? Oh yeah, we think positive and I think my way there. No, you can't think your way there. You have to rewire your internal patterns um, and shift things internally before you can do that. And again, it is not just something mental that you can, you know, you, where you can think your way to it. It is it's, it's something that has to go through the deeper layers. So when we do the inner child work, we, we use, like, again, all our facilities that we have. We use the mental, yes, it's a part of it. We um, have to think better thoughts, for sure, but that alone will, will not get us anywhere. We, we will have to also, if we want to go deeper into the deeper layers, we have to understand that when these layers were created in childhood, our brain was not developed the way it was it is now, right? We, the way we learn and perceive things, that way we took in things what we were in a different brain, in a different state. We were not in a, in a better state where we consciously were doing, doing, doing. Now we, when we are little children, we are in a, almost like in a, in a trance kind of state where we see the world completely different and take things in very differently. And in order to change things that were wired into you then that you want to change now you have to allow yourself to get back into that state and how do you do that well you do that with the help of meditation meditation music that um, allows your brain to go into that theta state into even an alpha state where where you are open to receive information in a different way. So guided meditations are a beautiful um, way to rewire things um, in this area. And if we are staying with the topic of money and if we learned at an early age that money is hard to come by, money doesn't grow on trees, money is this, money is evil, money is that. When we learned that, you know, at the age of four or five, when we heard our parents say this, when we saw our parents deal with money a certain way, well, you can now, of course, tell yourself that's not true. Money is good. Money is this. But that alone will not be enough to rewire those neural pathways. In order to rewire these neural pathways, you have to use all the tools and all the, um, like I said earlier, facilities you have. Also, journaling is a beautiful way to help inner child work to produce results in terms of um, rewiring um, those neural pathways. And the most important thing here is consistency. Now to just sum it up, the understanding of how our inner world is representing our outer experience is what the second eighth house axis is trying to teach us and it teaches us that on uh, many different levels right and money 
and our finances are one one part like what energy are you holding inside of you when it comes to um, your money money mentality and how is that then represented in your outer world and again to make that really really clear it is not just thinking your way to riches you're not just thinking your way to riches or you're not just thinking your way to a better uh, and more beneficial um, money belief and um, financial circumstance. You have to actually do the inner work and understand the present, where you're at. And you don't need to understand how you got there and why you got there, but you need to understand where you're at and where you want to be and how you have to rewire your circuitry to get there and that's one big part of the eighth house energy and um like i said earlier yes the eighth house also represents death and rebirth but that is part of it right something old needs to die so something new can flourish right we need to let go of things that don't serve us so we can actually move to where we want to move i have never in my life been able to get to a new place without having to let go of something. Something always needs to be released to, to, to move forward. W one more thing about the eighth house. We, I mentioned that before, um, the eighth house also represents your partner's finances and money coming in from other places. And when we have, um, for example, Venus or Jupiter in this area, we tend to um, live on the luckier side in life, well, unless there are difficult um, um, aspects uh, in this area. But we, we often find people uh, that have husbands that um, take care of them, where the, the husband is um, financially secure. Um, also, then uh, the benefics, uh, Venus and Jupiter in the second and in the eighth house are generally uh, placements where we have an easier time to call in uh, the money, uh, call in uh, financial favors or favors in general, like uh, earthy favors, meaning things we like, especially when we have it in the second house, it's, it's easier for us to um, make money. When we have it in the eighth house, it's easier to receive money from others. And that is a very general um, understanding of this, but in my experience, it, it, it rings true. Um, if we have Saturn in, uh, in this area, the, the work is generally um, a little tougher. Saturn in the second house is generally a placement that uh, makes us learn about this part of our life in a in a harder way and uh, there are more obstacles to overcome i've seen a lot of charts where because it is my generation so uh, where people have jupiter and saturn in the second house now that is an interesting one because um these people are born with a conjunction early 80s the conjunction between um, Jupiter and Saturn and that one is um, it's like a ping pong like it is very easy for them to call in the money but at the same time um, they tend to um, manifest obstacles where they then have to prove to themselves that they earned that money so there's a, there are a lot of, obviously, a lot of um, um, different ways, you know, the, a, the, the second house and the eighth house can manifest in someone's lives depending on the planetary situation, the aspects to the planets in those houses, and also, of course, to the, depending on the signs that are in, um, in these areas. So if you have any more questions about this polarity, let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.